Hello, I'm Dr. James Baldwin, Vice President of Enrollment Management at the University of Pittsburgh at Bradford. I'm very happy to be able to share some thoughts with you today and to talk about the University of Pittsburgh's new program, the Pitt Success Pell Mentor Program. The University of Pittsburgh is a state-related institution in the state of Pennsylvania and comprises the main campus in Pittsburgh and four regional campuses in Titusville, Bradford, Greensburg, and Johnstown. The total undergraduate population for the University of Pittsburgh is a little over 24,000 students. The goals of this program were to improve accessibility for low-income students, to improve retention rates among Pell-eligible students, to improve graduation rates among Pell-eligible students, and to reduce the indebtedness of those students upon graduation. The university has shown measurable differences in these areas between Pell eligible and non-Pell eligible students. Now the Pell Grant is a federal Title IV aid program available to undergraduate students who are pursuing their first baccalaureate degree or professional degree. Generally, the Pell Grant does not have to be repaid. And eligibility starts for families whose total income is 50,000 or less with the largest and maximum Pell Grants available to families whose income is 20,000 or less. A student may receive the Pell Grant for up to a total of 12 terms or semesters. Now, who receives the Pell Grant? Well, according to the National Center on Educational Statistics from 2015 and 2016, 47% of undergraduate women and 40% of undergraduate men received the Pell Grant. If we look at the race and ethnicity coding based on IPEDS information, 34% of white students received a Pell Grant, 71.8% of black students received a Pell Grant, 59.8% of Hispanic students, 36.4% of Asian students, 58.5% of Pacific Islanders, 61.6% .6 for American Indian or Alaska Native students, and 48% of those students who had indicated two or more races non-Hispanic. The university's program was launched in February of 2019. It was part of a $27.1 million initiative split between the Pell Match program and the Pitt Success Grants for fiscal year 2020. This was the largest restructuring of financial aid in its history. The Pitt Success Pell Match Program matches dollar for dollar any federal Pell Grant awarded to any of Pitt's undergraduate students on all campuses beginning in fall of 2019, up to and including the cost of attendance. What were the outcomes of the university's program? Well, first, let's look at accessibility. In the first year of the program, there were increases in the number of Pell eligible students, a 15% increase in first year Pell eligible students at the Pittsburgh campus and an 11% increase at the regional campuses. Next, let's, let's look at retention. There were increases in Pell eligible first year to second year retention at the Pittsburgh campus, an increase of 86.9% to 93.5%, and also at the regional campuses with an increase of 65.8% to 75.9%. There are also measurable differences between the Pell eligible and non-Pell eligible students and those measurable differences in the past decreased such that there was only a 0.2% difference in retention rate at the Pittsburgh campus between Pell eligible and non-Pell eligible and only a 5.5% difference between Pell eligible and non-Pell eligible students at the regional campuses. Graduation rates are still to be determined because we are only looking at our second year of awarding the Pell match grants. However, it's important to note that you will find it very difficult to impact or affect graduation rates if you're not effectively impacting or increasing your retention rates. Next, let's look at indebtedness. 
So, so far, looking at the, the amount and the number of students who are Pell eligible who took out loans, we saw a decrease by 49% at the Pittsburgh campus and a decrease by 47% at the regional campuses. And if we look at the average loan amounts taken out by Pell eligible students, we saw a decrease by 9% at the Pittsburgh campus and a decrease by 13% at the regional campuses. So far, we believe that this program was definitely worthy of continuation. We're looking for ways to enhance that program uh, and to make that program more visible to low-income families and to guidance counselors and other organizations that are advising students on college choice. Uh, it's been my pleasure to share with you this information today. And uh, if you have any questions, my contact information is right here. You're welcome to uh, reach out to me and I'd be happy to hear from you. So with that, I thank you very much and have a great day.